Yo, what's up YouTube? Welcome to Dom's Media Zone. Today I'm going to be doing a really basic beginner's tutorial for Canon's Digital Photography Pro version 4. I'm going to show you how to use the software to edit your RAW files that come out from your Canon camera and to basically just adjust the basic settings to get the photos looking good and to save it as a JPEG file. So without further ado, stay tuned and I hope you enjoyed the video. <music> Hi everyone and welcome to the Digital Photo Professional version 4 tutorial. I'm going to put the link to the software down in the description and once you've downloaded and installed it, first thing you need to do is double click to open the software up. Once the software opens up, it looks like this. If you go to the left hand side, you'll notice that it's got a folder tab selected. This basically shows the file structure in your computer, specifically your desktop. So place the folder with the images that you want to edit onto your desktop and name it's something that you can identify so for this example i've created a folder called dpp4 tutorial and in this folder i have a couple of the raw file images that we're going to edit so i'm going to select my cr3 folder and as you can see it opens up all the raw file images in that folder so now if we want to choose one that we're going to edit let's say for example we want to work with this photo here of this little monkey we could press this little quick check button on the top and this will open up the photo just to show us that it is the right photo we want to work with as well as give you some basic information here this is the histogram and it tells you what settings in the camera were used to take this photo now to go back we're going to click this little return button here and say we're happy working with this photo so what we're going to do in the top right hand corner you've got an edit image button so we can click this edit image button and now it opens up our workstation and you can see this little panel on the right hand side at the bottom here you also have a couple of buttons the eye for example the information button gives you the camera settings again that were used for this photo you can switch that off you've also got like the zoom in and zoom out buttons over here and over here you've got a button that will give you pretty much the before and after image so while you're editing you can see what it used to look like and what it looks like now but for the purpose of this exercise i'm just going to work with the one view window okay so looking at this image now let's try improve it a little bit so the first thing you're going to notice on your panel that this tab is selected this is your basic image adjustment now in this tutorial like i said it will be really basic just for beginners so we're going to work in this basic adjustment tab and we're going to work in the crop tab so let's start doing our basic image adjustments so the first thing that we're going to do is adjust the brightness there's a little brightness level here so if you move this to the left it, the photo will get a bit darker if you move this to the right the photo will get brighter so for this case i think the photo is good enough as it is but it could be a little bit darker because this was shot in quite a bright day so let's just decrease it a little bit and that's what that did so now next part you can do is white balance adjustment so here there's a little drop down you can actually tell the software what light you took the photo in and it will adjust it automatically for you i don't usually use this setting because i prefer to do things manually but for example if this photo was shot in daylight which it was i could select daylight and you'll see it adjusts the photo to daylight conditions now, i don't particularly like this because it gave it kind of like a yellowy tint so i'm just going to leave it back on auto Auto ambience priority and we'll do the adjustments ourselves the next part you'll see is called fine tune this is where you can change the colors so you can add a little bit of a certain color or decrease a little bit of a certain color so for example if you can see in the top right hand square here you've got green and yellow we wanted to decrease that a little bit we could drag this little pointer a bit away so if i drag it all the way you'll see what happens to the photo it changes color to purple so you're basically adding more of a certain color decreasing a little bit of another color we could decrease the green and yellow a little bit but i don't want to do that so for now i think it's pretty good where it was in the center so i'm just going to leave that in the center the next part we want to look at is the auto lighting optimizer okay this is you telling the software basically to adjust the light for you automatically now i've got it set to standard so it's already adjusted it to standard that's the default but if we were to change that to low you'll see it changed the lighting a bit more so it went a little bit darker than it was and if we change this to strong it will adjust it to more brighter so that's up to you you have a play around in those settings and have a look which one looks the nicest to you i'm just going to leave mine on standard for now if we scroll a little bit lower you'll see over here we've got a picture style drop down so once again you can change the type of photo that you took so for example if you took a portrait of someone you could select 
portrait photo if you took a landscape photo you can select landscape and it will adjust the settings to the picture style that you took but in this case i'm just going to leave that at auto i don't usually fiddle with that setting either okay the gamma adjustment there has an auto button if you use this button it can be quite good it will adjust the gamma of the photo for you automatically but for now i'm just going to leave that and i'm going to go down into these settings here and where i'm going to choose the settings myself so for example contrast i like to usually increase the contrast by one so you can see it went up by one and already the photo changed a little bit and then the shadows so these are the shadows are all the black parts of your photo so for example like the head of the monkey here and the tail if you keep an eye on those i'm going to decrease the shadows to make them a little bit darker so if i go decrease you see that black kind of stands out a little bit more now and the highlights is got to do with all the parts that are quite light like the part around the ears here where it's a bit white uh, these things on the floor where they're a bit white so if i increase the highlights by one you'll see the white parts will pop out more so the shadows what i usually do if the photo is quite bright and it's got some black colors in it that i want it to be more black than it actually is in the photo i decrease the shadows if you have a photo that's very darkish and you've got too many shadowy parts that you want to kind of get rid of you could increase the shadows in that case then the black would become a little bit more brighter so for me i like the way it is right now okay the color tone usually just changes the tone of your pictures i usually leave this at zero but for example if i had to drag this all the way up you'll see the photo becomes very greenish if you move it the other way around it becomes much warmer so this is kind of like your warm and cool colors but i'm going to leave that at zero for now because i don't want to change the tone of the color the part that i do like to change is the color saturation here i usually add a little bit of saturation and as you can see that adds to the color the greens and the yellows on the monkey's back you could even do like an extra color saturation but as you can see it does increase it with each number that you go up by or you could decrease it if you go down it will take away all the color i usually increase it by one so if it starts at zero i usually end it at one so it adds a little bit of saturation to my photo now the sharpness mask here what i usually like to do i pick sharpness on the drop down and then from here you can decrease the strength or increase the strength of the sharpness now if you want the finer details to show a little bit sharper you could go ahead and increase it which is what i usually do and to me this looks quite good right now so i'm happy with this result you can click the before and after to compare the two so as you can see before the color wasn't as bright as it is now we did increase the black of the tail and the railing here and the white parts pop out a little bit more so in my opinion the photo on the right which is the final result for now is a little bit better now we're going to go back to our single view and we're done in the basic image adjustment tab and it's as easy as that just to correct those tiny details on your photo next tab i'm going to show you is up here this is the crop and rotate images tab so if i click on this tab you'll see it takes a little bit of time to load and once it has loaded what you can do is you can click on the image and it will display this little square which selects the whole image so what i can do now is drag and move this part around to how i want to crop my photos so say for example i really want to kind of zoom in on this little monkey and i don't need this additional part at the back what i'll do is i'll just kind of crop it like that okay once i'm happy with that i click on that again and as you'll see now it cropped in our photo so i'm happy with that result so that's as simple as cropping gets now you can go back there's a little thing called angle here so if you're back in the cropping section and i drag the angle you can see it rotates the photo back and forward to how we want it now i liked it the way it was so i'm going to leave this at zero now clicking back onto our basic adjustments tab you've got your photo complete you've got the basic settings of your photo done if you're happy with the photo and if you don't want to adjust anything else you can always come back here and change things around but if say you're happy with this what you'll do now is click the save button on top if you click save it'll ask you to choose a folder where you would like to save your photo and what type you'd like to save your photo as so you could do things like tiff files or jpeg i'm going to keep a jpeg so over here you'll see an image quality little slide your raw images are usually quite large and when you save them in jpeg output they are still large so if you want to lose some of the size you could decrease your image quality here but if you want to keep it with the highest quality leave it at 10 which is what i usually do and then if i click save i can rename it here so let's go and rename this monkey edited and if i click save you'll see 
now it starts saving your photo it does take a couple of seconds to save because these photos are quite large but once it's finished it will tell you it's done okay there we go output file has saved i can just say exit it shows me here that there was no errors and i can click exit now what we can do from here is just go and preview our photo in our normal photo manager as you can see our photo has been saved here and what i can do is double click on it and it opens up the edited photo and this is now your jpeg photo and if i compare the original size so our cr3 our raw file photo was 37.4 megabytes and our edited jpeg photo is 13.6 megabytes so jpeg is a lot smaller than a raw file but in this case we kept 100 percent of the quality which is really good and that is the basic tutorial for the Digital Photo Professional 4 from Canon. It's a free software which you can download from the Canon website. And if you do have a Canon camera, you can use the serial number to download it. The software is fantastic for if you just want to convert your RAW files to JPEGs and do your basic adjustments. The Canon's usually really good with the colors already. So the software will just allow you to do little touch up. There is a lot more functionality in here. There's things like the cloning tool where you can correct spots and things like that. You can change colors and do curves on here there's a whole lot more to it but this was just the beginner basic introduction to the softwares and thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed this beginner's guide on how to use the canon's digital photography pro version 4 i hope it helps you out i hope you like this video if you do do subscribe to this channel for more videos to come and have a good one thank you for watching goodbye